Hello and welcome back to Loud Creations. In today's video, I am going to be making lavender vanilla mead. I'm doing a one gallon batch and I am doing this for the new moon in Virgo, which is on August 27th. And then we'll be checking in on it a couple weeks later for the full moon in Pisces, which will be on September 10th. I'm incorporating astrology into my mead making for this video series. And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to select herbs that are associated with uh, the zodiac signs for the new and the full moon, so for the whole cycle, and then combining them together and trying to create a methaglen or medicinal mead that is more geared towards some of the typical um, ailments of the zodiac signs for that period. The zodiac sign Virgo is rules the abdomen and Pisces rules the feet and all of the bodily fluids and this includes blood, mucus, glandular secretions, lymphatic systems, endocrine system. Um, and what I did to prepare for this particular mead is I just read up on the common ailments for Virgos and Pisces and then I selected herbs that uh, are also associated with the signs and act as remedies for these specific ailments for the zodiac sign. Lavender is a cooling herb and it helps with digestion, uh, nausea, as well as um, just heartburn. And it's also calming to the nervous system. Uh, and same goes for vanilla. Vanilla has is uplifting, but it's also calming. And they're both, depending on where you look, um, lavender is associated or is a remedy herb for both Virgo and Pisces. Um, and so I decided to combine the two to make kind of a self-care mead where, um, because the zodiac signs of Pisces and Virgo are known for losing themselves, Virgo being, you know, being over analytical, uh, working too hard, and not stopping to care for themselves. And then um, Pisces is more emotional, picking up on the and taking on the emotions of others and losing themselves in that and, and having ailments because of it. So I have for this, I, I, I'm taking a risk with lavender. I've never worked with lavender in my mead before. And I'm gonna put a third of a cup for a gallon in. I'm, not sure how this is gonna turn out. I'm also making a lavender extract in case I wanna add more flavor at the end. Um, and then I have one vanilla bean. So we're gonna be using one vanilla bean. <laughs> now that we've got all the astrology stuff out of the way, for those of you who are here just to learn about making mead, I am getting into it now. Um, so this recipe, I am using a one and a half gallon carboy uh, just because I'm going to have herbs and stuff in there and I want to make sure that I get a full gallon out of this. So for fermentation, I'm using a slightly bigger vessel. And um, I also don't have a scale currently. So one of the rules of thumb that I found in all of my research about mead making is you want to use the same type of measurement. So if you're going by weight, you want to use weight across the board. And generally, you know, honey is in pounds and other um, ingredients are in grams. And so, unfortunately, I don't have a scale right now. I haven't found one that I like. So I estimated, I have this honey that is from a local beekeeper in my neighborhood and uh, three and a half pounds of honey is what I'm gonna use for this particular recipe. And that is approximately four and two thirds cups. So I went ahead and filled this up. I actually put closer to five cups in here, but you know, we're just estimating at this point. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not super accurate in my measurements. Uh, maybe going forward, once I get some recipes I wanna reproduce over and over again, I will try to be more accurate. But as it is now, just under five, five cups of honey is what I'm going for here. I am also going to add some zest from a lemon and also I like the lemony flavors um, with the lavender so I'm going to add half of this lemon's juice as well. I have my Lalvin D47 yeast um, and that's what I'm using today. I am going to try to rehydrate it before adding it in so you can just pour it in too. I, I found that the meat 
turns out both ways that yeast has not failed me yet. But I got this cup so that I can rehydrate that yeast. I have some Go Firm that I'm gonna add just a quarter teaspoon uh, to give the yeast something to be happy about in, in addition to the honey. And I think, I think that's it. Oh, another thing you need for when you're starting your, your batch of mead is your hydrometer because you're gonna wanna take a measurement. Um, so let's get to it. I'm gonna start by adding my honey to the carboy. And I have this tiny little funnel. Yeah, I need a bigger funnel. This this is not this isn't really cutting it. But um I'm gonna ooh, there's still sanitization fluid left in here. So I sanitized everything on this table. This is why there's um towels. Uh, I also spilled a bunch of honey, but you guys didn't don't need to see that part. Um yeah. All right, so here we go. I am going to attempt to pour this honey into this carboy and um, I'm gonna try it without the funnel and let's see if that is a good or a bad decision. I just feel like the funnel's gonna slow it down, but it also would make it, ah! Okay, okay, eh. Did it. <laughs> Take that back. I'm going to use the funnel. Oh, this honey is so good. So this honey is from, is a red, is clover and wildflower. The gal that I got it from had her bees in her front yard. Um, also, uh, she has some up in the mountains here. So let's just stand up and hope for the best here, because I already wasted some honey. Uh, putting the honey in for me is really the most challenging part of this whole thing. Like, I don't think it's all that challenging otherwise. I mean, getting the flavors right and all that, that's, I'm still working on that. So while I'm doing this, I'm probably just gonna speed this up so it's not so boring. Okay, so this is still dripping in. So now I am going to um, get my other ingredients ready. Oh, you know what I should should have done at the beginning? I should have, could have, would have. Put a little bit of my filtered water into this cup. I'm gonna go ahead and rehydrate my yeast. Uh, hopefully this water is not too cold. Um, on the packet it says 95 to 98.6 degrees, basically body temperature. Um, and this came out of the refrigerator, but it's been sitting a while, so we'll hope for the best. Now, you don't need the entire packet of yeast uh, for one gallon, but I'm feeling lazy. So I'm just gonna pour the whole thing in Swish it around, get it all. Little yeasties in there, in the water. And I'm gonna set this aside. So those can come to life um, while we finish these other steps. So, oh, good. I made a mess. There's honey all over the carboy that I need to clean off and there's honey all over me, but I, this is, this is just par for the course for me. I went ahead, I went ahead and just brought a regular peeler uh, to get the lemon zest and I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna get a couple of, um, and this, what I read is the zest, so you don't wanna get the pith, uh, you just want the zest. So this might not have been the easiest way to do this, but actually this, this is pretty darn easy. Um, Anyway, you don't want to get the pith, you just want the zest. And uh, this, so what I've, what I've read is the zest gives that 
nice lemon scent. Uh, and the juice itself gives like the, you know, the tartness and the flavor. Um, so I'm just going to use a little bit of this zest. I'm not going to go too crazy. Maybe one more little. Um, I think a lot of the recipes that I tried early on call for like a teaspoon of lemon zest. And again, it's good to get consistent with what, what you're measuring. Uh, if you're measuring uh, in weight or volume, because uh, I'm not leading by example here, I'm doing all different. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put this stuff in. There's my lemon zest. Going down a little zesties, oh, sticking to the honey. Okay, hopefully that'll drop down when we pour water in. Um, and then I'm gonna put the uh, juice of half a lemon. These are fairly small lemons. So I'm just gonna take my, my knife here, cut it in half. Um, I tend to put probably more tartness in my most recent meats than I need to, but for some reason I keep doing it. So we'll see how this works out. This is like the same as having uh, your acid blend. So instead of using a powder, I am using lemon juice. So we're done there. I'm just going to set it looking to the side here. And I'm going to have to wash out my funnel because I'm going to use that to put, putting it in my bucket here, my sanitization fluid. Set my the rest of my lemon aside for something for later. Ah, I have also my vanilla bean and I'm going to split it. And I did a little research on, you know, how, what, how you put, uh, add your vanilla bean for fermentation. A consistent thing that I found is that you want to split the bean so that, um, all of the essence from this can be absorbed into the mead. Um, also, I, you can, um, so I'm just going down the center of this and opening it up, making sure it's open. No, that's not working. Let me try over here. Um, anyway, there's little seeds inside here. Ooh, that smells so nice. Oh, it smells so good. Um, anyway, there's little seeds inside of, why is this not opening? There's pulp and seeds inside of the bean, but I'm just going to leave it all in there. Uh, I've seen some stuff about scraping it out and what have you, and I know I'm risking having more stuff floating around, but there it is. I split my bean, split it a little bit all the way. Smells absolutely lovely. Oh, okay. There's my bean. Um, and then my funnel, of course it's wet. So some of my lavender might not go in there. Now I'm putting all of this in before adding water and mixing it up because I feel like if there's little chunkies in there, maybe it'll help stir stuff more easily. Oh. Okay, so this is probably one of the messiest meads I've ever done, but it's not because of the ingredients so much as the person making this stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to fill this about halfway with water, and this is going to end up being a little low in here just because I'm not doing a full gallon and a half, which is what this container holds. And wish me luck here, because I'm not using the funnel. I know, you think I would have learned my lesson the first time, but no. Oh, okay, so I filled this. Eh, that's a little less than halfway. Let's put a little more water in there. Let's do it. 
Okay, so this is my filtered water. Uh, and I just remembered looking at, you know, all the little pieces of lavender sticking over everything. I also have a mesh bag that you can put your herbs or fruit or whatever in so that they don't, you don't have as much of a mess. Um, but I don't have a large enough wide mouth fermenter right now um, to where I think it's worth doing that. I could do it in the brew bucket, which one of my recipes coming up I'll probably end up doing. Because, man, this gets messy. All right, so next step is put a bung in here. I have one without a hole in it, which makes it a little easier. And I'm just going to shake this up. Yep, I'm still going. I don't know, this can take like, let's see, around five minutes. Um, something I thought of though while I was shaking this thing up, um, this is also good for adding oxygen to your must, uh, which the yeast loves. So this will also help with fermentation. That's why I like to go this route of shaking it up. And also it's just kind of fun. Okay, that's looking pretty well mixed. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Just smell it. Now the thing with lavender is I know if you use too much or let it sit in there for too long, you risk it tasting soapy. But um, I have high hopes for this. And hopefully the vanilla will soften that flavor a little bit. Okay, so what's next? I'm gonna put the rest of the water in. Okay, I think that is pretty good. All right, so we filled it up. I'm just gonna give it a couple more shakes. Get it mixed again with the extra water. So at this point, we can take our hydrometer meeting because we have all of our honey, all of our ingredients, and all the water in there, uh, minus the go firm and the yeast, but uh, that shouldn't make a difference. You can add the yeast. I mean, you know what? I changed my mind. So now I'm going to add the yeast. My funnel is out of commission right now, so I'm going to attempt to just pour this in, and hopefully it'll go better than it did with the honey. Went way better than it did with the honey. So happy. Okay, so I'm going to shake this up a little bit. Just move it around, get that yeast in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and take my reading. This is my big cleanup mess over here. Um, some garbage can. Okay, so we're going to take our hydrometer reading. Just going to put it in this little beaker. Yeah, there's going to be some chunks in it. I don't think that'll make too much of a difference. If it looks like I want a little more honey. I might add honey in depending on what this reading is. I'm hoping to get this at about 13 or 14 percent. The alcohol tolerance for D47 is 14%, although I have gotten meads that ended up being more like 15%. So uh, it's just an estimation. It's just an estimate. That's what I'm trying to say, an estimation. Okay. Gave it a little spin to get the bubbles off. Oh, I think we have, it's going to be plenty of, there's plenty of honey because this is.
see it all the way. Ah, okay, I'm gonna spin it again because I think it's 1.12. Maybe even higher than that. So I do want this to be a sweeter mead without having to back sweeten. I found that usually all of my meads go dry and I end up back sweetening, and it would be great if I have one that I don't have to back sweeten. Okay, so this is 1.124. I think it's 1.15. So I'm gonna go ahead, write that down in my little, my little notebook here, uh, and then I'm gonna put it on the container. The OG is 1.15, which is pretty high. I'm hoping to have this, like I said, I'm hoping to have it. Uh, max out around 14% alcohol and then have some residual sweetness. So 1.15 is great for that. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this back in. Uh, everything's been sanitized too, so I'm not too worried about, including my hands. Um, I'm not too worried about, you know, pouring stuff back in. I've been pretty lucky so far as far as experiencing anything that has to do with bacterial contamination. I've, I've yet to have that happen. I'm gonna knock on some wood here. Uh, but, you know, doesn't mean it won't happen at some point, but I'm pretty careful about sanitization. Although I am getting a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> Hence pouring the stuff back in. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give these little yeast seeds a quarter teaspoon of goat sperm and just to give them some extra food and pep. Burn away. Okay. Oh, and there's another step. There's going to be the airlock. I'm going to just swirl this around to get that. Okay. So. Now, in my little container, my sanitization fluid, and I'm actually just going to use a little of the sanitization fluid. I'm going to use the sanitization fluid inside of my airlock just in case anything gets in there. I think I have a little too much in there, so I'm going to wipe it out. Okay, that's better. Okay, I just need to find the lid for this. Wow, I have lavender in my hair running all over me. This has been a really fun video to make. Wait just a minute. I totally forgot to add in my handful of chopped raisins and my tannins. So I'm putting this in here to uh, just let you know that I added a handful of chopped raisins, maybe like 20 raisins. And then normally I do a one cup of strong black tea, but since I'd already taken my hydrometer reading, I went ahead and added this wine tannin, about a quarter teaspoon. And now back to the regular video. So what I'm going to do is put this, uh, set it aside in my closet with my other experiments. <laughs> and I'm going to let this ferment for a couple weeks. And I will come back for the full moon in Pisces to check in on it, see how it's doing. And possibly rack it into another container to let it go into secondary fermentation. And also, if you have any interest in learning more about the zodiac signs, I have some videos that uh, describe the, sense, the zodiac sign of Virgo and Pisces, and I will go ahead and leave the links to those in the description below. I will also put the playlist at the end of this video so that if you're interested in learning about astrology, you can do that there. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was useful, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.